Hello, everyone, and welcome to Autism BC Talks. I am Brock Shepard, the Program Manager with Autism BC, and we're very lucky to be able to welcome back Jackie McMillan from uh, Ottawa, Ontario. Jackie is an autistic self-advocate as well as a biohacker, and uh, Jackie joined us last month for our April theme, and just at the end of her talk, I was like, wow, there's so much more that we can be able to learn from Jackie. So I'm very happy that you were able to come back for our May theme talk, which are all around um, self-care. Well, thanks for asking me. I, uh, I'm really happy to get this information out there. So with our Autism BC Talks, what we're trying to do is engage our membership and listen to our membership and be able to answer some of their questions. So when we posted uh, on our social media that you were going to be joining us again, we had some of these questions that came in. Uh, so if you see me looking down over here, I'm going through a number of the questions uh, that people have emailed in beforehand. If you have comments right now, you can put them into the bottom of the video here and I'll be able to try to get to them. Uh, we have about a half an hour for this presentation and I'm sure that we could talk to you for lots and lots of time, but I know your time is very valuable. You've had a lot of calls today. Uh, so let's just get right into it. If we, if we start this off, some people are saying a biohacker, what is a biohacker? Are you able to explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, so when you, when you read uh, medical journal articles, they always tell you, you know, what they were testing and how many people they tested it with. Well, when you read those articles, because you're looking up symptoms that you're experiencing, you can, you can go, well, I can't do a big study, but I can do a study of one. I can say, I have this symptom. This looks like something that is safe for me to try and something I can easily access. So I'm gonna do that. So I test out what's in the research that's do-it-yourself, relatively accessible and relatively inexpensive. And then I put that data together in a way that makes it accessible to other people. Great, thank you for that. That's, I'm sure a lot of people read those type of studies and they go, mm, I don't know if that would really work for me. So it's good to be able to have a name for that. Um, at the end of your last talk, you were talking about 12 different lifestyle tips for autistic individuals. And one of them that really stood out to me that I was like, oh, I wish we could expand on this uh, more was that mind-body integration. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, okay, so when I'm talking about the five things that will cause autism challenges, that will cause the brain inflammation at the root of our, our challenges, um, you know, Stress is right up there at the top. Well, why is that? Why is it causing mental, emotional, and physical challenges? It has a lot to do with our microbiome. What on earth is that? Uh, you know, people dealing with autism might be more familiar with it th than the rest of the population because so much of the research has focused on around that re lately, but I'm not gonna assume that. So every part of our body is teeming with little buddies. <laughs> And these little buddies are microbes of different types that help keep our skin clean, help keep our eyes clear, help not to form plaque on our teeth um, or that make plaque on our teeth because they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, and they line the entire length of our gut, different species in different places with different roles. And when, you're, uh, when your little buddies in your gut get upset, what happens is that your gut gets inflamed and it starts to crack open the spaces between the cells and it starts to leak stuff into the bloodstream. And that inflammation is also really hard on the good guys, the probiotics. And the probiotics are supposed to be, you know, anywhere around like 85% of, of what's in your gut. And then you've got the other 15% that are, you know, the shady characters, the, the uh, let's say you're in a crack neighborhood, they, you know, they're, they're really nice when there's an emergency and they'll help you put your fence back together or whatever. But, but sometimes there, there are dealings going on that you're not too happy about. Well, we've got creatures like that in us too, as long as the neighborhood keeps them uh, somewhat limited, 
they don't they don't cause problems but when the probiotics start dying off because of toxicity or stress or emfs or all of the other stuff that i mentioned last time what happens is some of these critters start to to overgrow and take over the space well they don't tend to break food down into things our body can absorb so our body starts getting behind on uh materials for maintenance and repair and they also don't manufacture a lot of the things that we need the way our probiotics do like the happy chemicals mm -hmm. and so what this means is oh stress uh, also um you know when you're not making happy chemicals you don't have any balance for the toxins getting produced and toxins create irritation toxins create depression toxins create anxiety toxins create aggression and and so if you're wanting to manage these things you can't just look at oh you know let's do behavioral work for uh emotions and, and mind no you actually have to look at your little buddies and go okay how do i get the happy happy ones back and and um you know it's it's complex it's a multifactorial thing but really what we're looking at is Anything you do with your mind is affecting your body and is affecting your emotions. You know, your thoughts can shift the way you feel immediately from good mood to bad or back. Uh, anything that's happening with your emotions is affecting your capacity to think and your body's ability to, to heal, to digest, to learn. You know, when, when you're really upset, how good are you at learning? You can't learn because when you're really upset, the two halves of your brain aren't talking to each other. So all you can do are automatic behaviors that you already know how to do. You have to get calm before you can learn. And this is one, one of the reasons, oh, excuse me. Sorry, I just finished lunch. This is one of the reasons that it's it's so difficult for autistics in classrooms with the sensory um, uh, sensory integration and also sensory sensitivities. Classrooms tend to be really active, really busy. It's like an assault. Mm -hmm. And when that's going on, how do you get de-stressed enough to get those two halves of the brain talking to each other so you can actually learn anything that's happening in the classroom? Well, you can't until you have processing time afterwards to take all the, the things you took in and start to integrate them and make sense of them. So, you know, what we're looking at is a situation where our medical system treats these as separate issues, but it all goes together. It's all hand in glove. You can't hit the body without hitting the emotions and the mental capacity as well. Exactly. Uh, and like, and over the past month, we have been listening to a number of stories. We've been sharing different articles. Our information team has been compiling different resources um, for autistic individuals and their families so they can make the best decisions on like what's for them. And something that has come up a lot over the last month was this connection of your mental health and your physical health. And it's understood that, okay, yes, these are connected but it's kind of still stigmatized there's a lot more there's a lot more ability to openly discuss physical ailments than it is to talk about mental ailments and i guess my question for you is if you were to give us like one two or three things that we can really do to be able to improve our mental health what would those be? Okay. So, I mean, probably at the top of the list is to start eating an anti-inflammatory diet, because that's going to, um, that's going to start supplying the things that the good guys will stick around for. And if you, if you eat an inflammatory diet, you're just going to keep killing them off. <laughs> And, and your mental health is going to continue to stay either not great or it's going to spiral down even further as more and more of the good guys die off because there's just not a habitat they can live in. You know, think about, about yuppies driving through an inner city that's just really wrecked. <laughs> they keep the windows closed and, and they're kind of looking around and it's just passed straight on through. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Do not do anything. Just get out of here. And it's like that for probiotics in our gut. 
you know, they may come in on the food that we're eating, uh, especially if we're getting a lot of really good, fresh, uh, organic or biodynamic or wild uh, produce, fruit and vegetables. But are those the main things that are in on an inflammatory diet? An anti-inflammatory diet has about 85% plant foods and they're not the starchy ones. They're not the beans and grains. And you can add beans and grains in later once you get some of the good guys back. But if you, if you have a, a, a gut full of bad guys, the way most of us with autism do, if you feed them starch, the bad guys are gonna have a party, leave waste everywhere that's really toxic. I mean, if you think, uh, you know, many of us in the autistic spectrum have very high yeast in our systems. What does yeast do with sugar? Starch is many sugars put together. It makes alcohol. So you end up with kids who get, well, not just kids, adults who get giddy and, you know, goofy after a meal and then have a system crash and then get really moody and hungover and start to have cravings. And, and, um, and this is when you see a lot of the ugly behaviors is, is the waste products that are created by the generalists, the not so good guys who are left over when the probiotics aren't there. Right. It's, it's their waste products that just really mess us up big time. Okay, that's a great number one diet. Okay. So number one is diet. Um, you know, next thing that I would look at is, is active stress reduction. Because mm -hmm. the reality is it's going to take time to start shifting all of these factors. You can't just flip a switch and everything's great. It's, it's, a, it's a gradual building and building and building of better and better and better. And so um, let's face it, you know, when a body isn't functioning optimally and it's affecting the emotions, affecting the, the thinking and all of these things, you got to have pieces to bring the stress down on a regular basis or you spend mm -hmm. your entire time stressed. So there are active stress release things that you can do, like, like exercise, uh, runners and climbers, but, you know, you can, you can tell the jitters have just gotten too big and they, they're gone. Um, uh, and then music, art, um, and then there are trauma release skills that uh, if you're verbal or you're able to type, you can actively do, but there are also passive stress reduction things as well. And these are things like um, drumming and rocking and droning mm. and um, brain entrainment audios that uh, it, our brain has these different um, frequencies that it goes into at different states. You know, beta is when we're really engaged and taking everything in and active. Uh, alpha is sort of normal, calm. Um, and then uh, theta is, is, is sort of right on the edge of sleep. Um, dream time, high perception, and then delta is is when we're in deep sleep and our brain's getting its its suds and soap and rinse overnight. Um, and the the thing about drumming and other brain entrainment techniques is that they're they're helping to entrain the brain in alpha and theta and delta states, which are very relaxed, very uh, aware states, and, and they can take you there a lot faster than you can necessarily get there on your own. Hmm. Do you use any of those uh, for yourself, for your like, I use personal all of them. Care? Okay. <laughs> yeah, mix and match. Um, you know, if you do the same thing all the time, it can get a little wearing. And uh, right. particularly because we are very high inflammation, we're really vulnerable to repetitive strain injuries. And so mm -hmm. it's very common for us to have pain in the extremities, swelling, all of these kinds of things. So the more you're, you're changing it up, the better. Okay, yeah. I know that this month, like a lot of our staff team shared what do they do for their own self-care. And I know personally, like I get so much more calm when I just go for a walk through the forest. So if I've ever had like a hard day, I live on the North shore, I come and I just like walk up to the mountains and go around the lakes. I used to live um, around the, the Ottawa Valley uh, and it was just like my calm, happy place. And it's still like to this day, I'm like, mm, too much stuff. I'm gonna go into the forest. I'll be much, uh, be much better. Yeah. Yeah, I call those tree days. Uh, yesterday evening, I was so stressed out from having been working on finances and finances and finance to, to get all the tax stuff set up. And, and uh, 
I finally wrapped up at around nine and went for a long walk. And I, I came back two hours later with wet feet, having been barefoot most of the time. <laughs> I find earthing's very helpful too. It, it, uh, it's really fast for pulling that inflammation down. And when I've gotten really stressed, at, you know, getting outdoors and barefoot, it's super, especially if I can put my feet in water and I'm, I'm near a river here, which is wonderful. That's great. Thank you for sharing. Um, and do you have a third one? Well, I, I talked about active stress reduction and passive stress reduction, self-care routine. Um, I mean, of course, there's always nutritional stuff and movement stuff. Now, if you're, if you're not stretching, it's very easy to get into very rigid movement patterns for those of us in the spectrum. And, and that can, um, make for inflexibility really quickly and it can restrict your lymphatic flow. And when your lymph isn't moving, that's when the aches get really big um, and that's no fun. Uh, and then I guess the, the, the third one is um, drainage, uh, drainage support. Most people don't realize that drainage is different from detoxification. And drainage is, um, you know, our, our brain lymph drains overnight into our body lymphatic fluid. And then the body lymphatic fluid drains through the lymph glands into the bloodstream and the blood gets cleaned by the liver and kidneys. And, and then the, the kidneys pee things out, the, the uh, liver packages toxins with the bile and, and passes it down through the bile duct into the, the digestive system. And it's supposed to get passed out as poo there. Well, I mean, if you're, if your brain can't drain properly, you get, you get uh, puffy eyes and stuffy nose and lots of symptoms in the head, headaches and can't think and brain fog and all this. And, and so there are, there are things you need to do to open up that. And then if your lymphatic system isn't flowing, that's when you get lots of, you know, stink and ache and all of that. And it, it skin problems, you get funny bumps and rashes and eczema and psoriasis and all of this because and bad smells <laughs> because stuff is trying to exit through your skin because you're not moving enough for that lymph or the lymphatic uh, uh, nodes are blocked and it can't get into the bloodstream. Well, then the blood, if the liver's overflowing because it just got too much to deal with, which is one of the reasons you start detoxifying your lifestyle, those 13 things I talked about last time. Yeah. And then, um, so if the bile duct is clogged, what that means is all of the, the, the toxins that are packaged for, for removal from the body back up into the liver, the liver's like, oh, I can't deal with this and dumps it back into the bloodstream. And then the kidneys get this whole lack of stuff that they're like, oh, I can't survive this. And this is when you end up with blood sugar and kidney trouble. So, so you know, each stage of that drainage process has to be working right in order for you to be able to, to detox. And all of us in the autistic spectrum have drainage and detox impairment blockages. And so there's, there's kind of an ongoing process of making sure that everything's flowing out the way it should be. And That's what are, probably... what are some like simple things that you could do to, to increase drainage? All right. So here's the easiest. Um, almost everyone I know in the autistic spectrum either has uh, chronic diarrhea or chronic constipation. And uh, what's showing up now is that chronic diarrhea is one face of constipative issues. Um, but essentially, if you're not pooing two to three times a day after every single time you eat, <laughs> you got a problem because that means that the wastes that your liver is passing in to the digestive tract to move out of the body are staying in there too long and are getting, getting absorbed back into the body again and recirculated and the liver's like, you, I saw you last week. What are you doing here again? And, and gets really upset and overwhelmed because it can't it can't take the it can't take the load in the first place never mind all the stuff that's coming back around again and again so you've hmm. got to make sure that colon is moving uh, that's uh eating enough fiber that's uh you know if you're not getting enough magnesium if you're not drinking enough water if you're not getting enough vitamin c all of these things help to keep the gut moving 
And there are things you can use to get things unstuck and moving properly, but um, you know, you're best if you're doing it with food, with nutrients, you know, the mm -hmm. vitamins and minerals that really support our body doing what it's designed to do, keeping itself healthy. Great, thank you. Uh, there was a question that came in uh, from parents and they said, what advice would you give families of autistic youth that uh, have, maybe they have difficulty uh, talking or communicating about uh, self-help or mental health? Okay. So chances are at some point in the past of these youth, there were things that would give them delight that would spark them. Um, you know, whether it's blowing bubbles or chasing after a rabbit or catching frogs or, you know, watching a particular program over and over again, <laughs> you know, though there, and it's not usually TV or movie related, but, but sometimes that's a way for us to deepen our understanding of what are the dynamics here? What's really going on? So, you know, the, the thing that I would, I would ask is first really notice when that youth has a better mood and, or when in the past they've had a better mood, what are the things that have lit their life up, lit, you know, their emotions up, made them excited and happy and, and engaged and, and then start, you know, just trying to incorporate those into every single day because so much of our day is really hard because this body doesn't feel good to live in. And the more that you surround yourself with things that spark, that you know, lift you up, that keep you enticed, you know, whether it's, whether it's rainbow bubbles or, or, or spray from a, a, a waterfall or whatever it is, it's something that's just look gleeful, gleefully lovely. So that's kind of the first thing. The second is, I highly recommend starting as early in life as you can to incorporate scheduled change on like a regular basis. So what I mean by that is that, you know, let's say Thursdays, every Thursday, you're going to pick one thing that's something you've never done before. And you're going to go out as a family and try it. And, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's Greek food or maybe it's, um, you know, volunteering, serving at a food bank, or, um, you know, whatever it is, you know, as a family, you go out, you try it out, and then you kind of, you know, debrief of, you know, what parts of that work, what parts of it didn't. And, you know, you, you role play ahead of time, you figure out what you need to do to get everybody there and everybody to do stuff. And one of the things that happens from this sort of scheduled change thing, we're always going to do something different at this time of week, is, is you, each of us develops this kind of lexicon of many, many different possibilities out there. And we start to develop confidence that there are some environments we can handle and some things that we can do that people appreciate no matter how quote unquote low functioning we are. And what that does is it really starts to build up this self-confidence of, oh, I, I could actually do that. And yeah, there are going to be things you can't do and you want to start small and build up. But, but I think trying different things on a regular established basis helps those of us who tend to, you know, crunch back and like, oh, change, it's so difficult. It helps us to get into a place of, you know, some changes I like. Some changes are good. Some changes are really juicy and, and uh, allows us to kind of get into that. Oh, I wonder what it's going to be like this time. A curiosity instead of a defense state around opportunity. Yeah. And I, I really like how you said, and you can do things to be able to get ready for whatever, say that was a Thursday. Like it's not, oh, we're just doing a new activity and there was no front loading. There was no... Yeah. yeah, this is where we're going. And these are kind of what the expectations are, but it does mm -hmm. allow that processing. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, that that whole piece around um, contribution. I mean, depression in those of us with autism is is endemic. I, I, I haven't ever met an autistic who didn't experience depression. <laughs> 
and and uh, you know the best way to address well let's let's frame this from another another avenue. Um, there's a, a fellow named Dr. Dean Ornish who wrote a book called Love and Survival, where he described uh, the protocol that he was putting through heart disease patients. He was putting heart disease patients through and getting these amazing results and other places, other hospitals and, and clinics were trying to repeat his results and couldn't do it. And he said, you're leaving out the most important part. And that is, um, you know, improving the quality and quantity of relationship in our lives. And the thing is that when you have autism, you often get into this place of feeling like there's nothing I can do well enough. I'm not good enough. I'm a bad person. There's no point in even trying. Like there are all of these things inside you that are just shrinking you down and making it harder and harder to try anything. And the best way to the best way to address that, and again, or the earlier the better, and uh, the earlier in life the better, is is to notice what a person can do and appreciate that, and 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 make their contributions a regular part of how your lifestyle goes. And if it's if it's just you know turning on the radio or or you know making sure all the lights are off at night, like it, it can be little things, but feeling like you've got something that is benefiting your family or benefiting your church community or benefiting your classroom, whatever it is, if there's something you you can do that feels like I'm making a contribution here. That's that's huge for those of us with autism, and it's a huge lift against depression. Yeah, and and celebrating those little contributions. Yeah, like all celebration doesn't need to be this big. No, no, it can be. It's like oh, you know, thank you so much for turning those lights out. I just didn't have the energy to go downstairs again. You know, yeah, it can be really small. It can be really small. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess we have time for one more question, uh, which was a, a more personal question for you, which is like, what do you do when you're feel, feeling very overwhelmed? Oh, well, number one, I try to avoid meltdowns. And uh, you know, that entails knowing what my downward spiral looks like, knowing the landmarks, knowing how far down the spiral I've gone. And, and then actually putting things in place to climb back up because I don't want to go all the way down that spiral. It's not fun for me. It's not fun for anybody around me. Hmm. Uh, you know, probably my top tool now is a set of trauma release skills that I've spent years developing. I studied nine different uh, methods for releasing trauma officially. And then a whole bunch that I've read up on unofficially because um, what I've found is that uh, when I start that downward spiral, there's usually an emotion and a belief that are caught up in that downward spiral. And if I can notice them, if I can name them, and then I can go, wait, is that true? You know, is this helping me in any way? And if I can clean that up, then I don't go down that downward spiral. Um, next is sort of, uh, you know, if I don't have the energy for trauma release, then I would go for something like um, reading or uh, pattern resolution, you know, something that has to do with patterns like, like sewing or puzzles or games or weaving where, you know, you're putting pattern together and it all flows and it, there's a sense of, of letting go of time, letting go of stress and just going into the task and flowing with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of thing can, can be really, really calming. And if I'm not, you know, if I'm not in good enough space to, to do something that requires having myself together a little bit, like weaving or sewing or puzzles or whatever, uh, then, then I'll get into doing repetitive actions. That's when I'll swing. That's when I'll bounce. That's when I'll rock. That's when I'll, you know, uh, there's a, a type of therapeutic body work that's also, well, it's a movement therapy called Traeger uh, after Milton Traeger that, that has to do with finding 
the softness in your body and and every autistic does this naturally and and so when we're doing that that's a very very uh non-cognitive non-demanding way of of sort of softening the edges and calming yourself down um so those are those that's kind of that's part of my progression. My progression is a lot more deep detailed than that, but those are some pieces that might be useful. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, I, I'm sure we could do a whole other talk just on releasing trauma. Like that's, um, Jackie, thank you so much for for being able to speak with us uh, again and being able to reach out. These talks really help support, empower, and connect the autism community. We love to be able to engage with our audience, share our audience's questions, and be able to reach out to um, professionals in the field like yourself that are so helpful when you are able to share your stories with us. Well, Brock, I'm, I'm really glad you and Autism BC asked because I, I think we need a lot more dialogue than we've got, and this is the kind of thing that needs to happen. So I'm really appreciative that you're doing this. We're going to continue to do it. We're going to continue to come up with different themes that people want to be able to talk about. Uh, and it's it's so interesting to see the different levels of engagement on things that people aren't talking about. Like last, last week, we had a, a post about a haircut. And there was like 60, 70 people were, were talking about it instead of here's another article, here's another this thing, this thing. I was like, this is amazing. These are the little victories, the little things that people want to be able to talk about that that overlap everyone on their journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're none of us are going to be without meltdowns. You know, our stress level is set so much higher than the rest of the population's meltdowns are going to be there. It's just how are you going to minimize and manage them? And I, I think surfacing this kind of thing is, is so valuable for all of us. Well, th thank you again. That's all the time that we have for today. Uh, but we will link in um, your, your contact uh, into the video. So if people want to be able to reach out to you directly with other questions, uh, and I'll be able to share uh, the, the book that you had mentioned as well into, into the bottom of the video. Great. Thank you.